Good morning. This is Saturday, the 20th. I'd like to begin by inviting you to church tomorrow. If you don't have a church, we invite you to attend ours. We're at the intersection of uh, Route 115 and 202 in Wyndham, just before you cross over the Gray Line. We're at a little church up on the hill. So if you don't have a church, I invite you to come to church here. If you do have a church and you're staying at home in your pajamas watching us on Facebook, you need to get to church. We need your fellowship here, and they need your fellowship at your church. So hope you go to church, but you're invited. Also, I'd like to wish uh, Jada Tuttle a happy birthday. Uh, Jada, we love having you as part of our church family, you and Andrew and the kids. So hope you have a great birthday, Jada, and we'll see you tomorrow. Today's uh, devotion is dependent on God's presence. This is Isaiah 40. Those who hope in the Lord will walk and not be faint. To walk and not be faint is the greatest test of our ability to endure, re requ requiring us to remain steadfast in the face of difficulty. In the Bible, the word walk is used to reveal our spiritual character. John the Baptist, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saw this as he walked, said, Behold the Lamb of God. The Bible is, is never abstract. It's always vivid and real. And God doesn't give us vague instructions like be spiritual. He says, walk before me faithfully. There's no thrill in walking. When we are in unhealthy state, either physically or emotionally, we always want thrills. Our emotional lives, thrill-seeking, leads to inordinate affection and destruction of our morality. What he's saying there, if you're always looking for the high, it can destroy you. In our spiritual lives, if we insist on seeking out mountaintop experiences, it leads to the destruction of spiritual normalcy inside of us. Because we have to have that sensational moment in order to feel like we're spiritual. When we walk faithfully before God, we will walk secure in the knowledge that He is with us. We know that the reality of His presence doesn't depend on place or time or how we're feeling. No matter what, he is there. It's when we refuse to believe this that our problems begin. We stop walking and go rushing about trying to find him. Once we are founded on the reality of his presence being with us, we will know the experience the psalmist described. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth would give way. At Psalm 46. At critical moments in our lives, we find it necessary to ask the Lord for guidance. But it should be unnecessary to always be saying, Oh Lord, tell me what to do. Of course he'll tell you. That is what the reality of his presence means. God is always there guiding us. If you are walking faithfully before him, he will alert you whenever your common sense decisions are not in accordance with his will. Whenever this happens, simply stop and be quiet and continue your walk trusting in his presence challenge I have for us today is will we walk before God faithfully let our let our character our Christian character which means we look like Jesus let that be seen as we walk in our every day no matter what it is we're into whether it's a mountaintop day or a day as dull as dishwater we would walk before God and know that he is with us let's pray father we thank you that you are always with us and we don't have to run around like Henny Penny looking for that sensational spiritual moment. You are with us in all things. So, Father, today, whether we are on the mountaintop or down in a tough valley, let us acknowledge that we walk and you are there with us. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.